All right, fourth graders, um, last week when we started our new unit and we discovered that we're going to be reading nonfiction this quarter and focusing on that while still continuing the good strategies we learned with fiction. But last week we started with um, to read nonfiction well. Um, we took some time and we selected some new books to put in your book bag. And we learned that one of the first things that we have to do as readers is to read it with me, please. Make a connection to your text. So whether it's a topic that you're really super excited about or it's a topic that you say, hmm, it's so-so. Maybe my teacher picked this book for me and it's not my favorite thing, um, but I'm still excited to read it or I can still make some connections to it. So I gave you that example, and I, I said, if you ask me to read all about Mayhawk? Dinosaurs. I might not be super, super excited. It's not my favorite topic. But as a reader, I would say, hmm, well, what do I already know about dinosaurs? Or what connection can I make that will help me to read a book about dinosaurs? And for me to be able to read to learn and understand rather than just reading it in, what kind of way did we say sometimes people read? Dentist. Skylar? Reading at the dentist. Yeah, reading like we're waiting at the dentist's office. When you are waiting for something in an office or somewhere and they have magazines and books lying around, how do people read those? Alex? Can you come up here and show us that? We'll say this was the, you picked this up while you were waiting for your turn at the dentist. Is he reading to learn? No. Is he reading to understand? No. no. He's reading in a waiting for the dentist kind of way, not really reading at all. Thank you, Alex. Mm -hmm. Benicia, something to share? Uh, my was fake yeah. yeah, some fake reading. Would you agree with her that he was fake reading? Yeah, and we all said last week, we've all done that, haven't we? We've had times when we're just not really reading or we're just kind of wasting time or just kind of looking at pictures. Well, we know as fourth graders, um, we're going to learn all the strategies that help us to continue to be strong readers of nonfiction, to read in a little bit more of a grown-up kind of way, um, to read to learn. So today we're going to talk about another strategy that researchers have found helps you to become a stronger reader of nonfiction. Okay. So fourth graders, just like there are like research who researchers who study about science topics, or research who study about dinosaurs, or researchers who study about medicine and helping people, um, there are also researchers, so scientists or people who study about how kids and how people learn how to read. Did you know that? That'd be kind of a cool job. And what they have learned from some research is that one, one really good strategy, there's lots of them, but one that we're going to talk about today that readers do is they preview a text before they start reading it. Now, you've probably heard that word before, preview. Turn to a neighbor and just do like a 15-second chat on what you think, what does the word preview mean? If your partner's not here right now, just turn to another partner group and join them. Okay, Cruz, Petra. Carter, Amora. Okay. Mm -hmm. What'd you, what'd you talk about? I said a preview is a book to a book before you read it. Okay. Amora? I said, I, I 
So you agree with him? Mm -hmm. right. Time. Okay. Um, a volunteer that would like to share what you talked about. Petra, what did you and your partner talk about? So you made a connection to like a preview for like a movie or something on TV that's coming? Is that what? Brayden? Skylar? Um, it's like um, if you're watching a movie and your friend or cousin comes over and they want to watch what you're watching, then you all um, like kind of start it from the beginning and um, they like um, end it at the like, ending. Like it's kind of like a book. Like movies are like. Tell me a little more. What do you mean like a book? So you're kind of getting them ready to yeah. read it or watch it? Mm -hmm. Alex? Uh, so basically, when you're watching a preview, preview, if you're just watching it over again, that's basically what a preview is. Mm -hmm. Any others? Jacob? Do we need it over again? Mm -hmm. When do we, if, let's make that connection. A lot of you, I think, talked about a movie. When do you see a preview? Jasmine? In the beginning of the movie? Yeah. So a preview is kind of at the beginning of something. Why do they show previews of movies? Carter? So if you didn't watch the last episode, you sort of know what happened. Okay. To kind of catch you up and get you to know things. Jasmine? Or if it's a movie, they might want you to watch those movies. Yeah. yeah. They're trying to get your attention and kind of get you interested in so that you will watch that movie or watch that TV show. Venetia? Hmm. Say that one part again. It makes you ask questions in your, in your mind or in your head, I think is what I heard you say. Yeah. Skylar, one more. Great connection. Well, fourth graders, we're going to talk the, with previewing books today. And you've done this. I bet when we talk about it a little more, you're saying, oh, I've been doing that a long time. I did that in third grade. I did that in second grade. We're going to look at, again, previewing a book, getting ourselves ready to read a nonfiction book. Um, what I often see um, is when people get a new book to read, they just jump right in. They just say, oh, oh, I got a new book on hippos, I can't wait to read. Or I got a new book on weather. And we just jump in and we start reading. Well, researchers tell us for us to be the best nonfiction readers we can be, um, what we need to do before we just jump into a book is take some time to think and get ourselves ready to read that book. Um, and we say you kind of have to boss yourself around a little bit as a reader and stop yourself. Because when you get a new book, you probably just want to jump right in and read it. Um, and you have to stop yourself and kind of say, hmm, well, before I just start reading, I need to ask myself some questions, kind of get my brain ready to do my best thinking and understanding. And with nonfiction, we want to check how is the book organized? How has the author taken all that information on hippos or on weather and organized it into their book? So today, because we just selected new books last week, many of you haven't even had a chance to look at, you've looked at maybe one of your books or two of your books, but not all of them. Today during your reading time, 
um, I really want you to focus on previewing your text before you start reading. That is going to help you grow some ideas on that. So I'm going to do a little model for you. I'm going to ask you to just kind of watch um, and notice some things, and then we'll talk about it. So I might pick up this book, Everything Weather. Um, and we know that this is the book that we are going to be using as a class. Um, this is kind of our class topic. We're going to be reading all about the weather. Um, so if I picked up this book, Everything Weather, and started reading. <coughs> Ooh, that's a fun picture. Ooh, tornadoes. Oh, wait. Am I reading in kind of a magazine, waiting for the dentist magazine kind of way? Oops, I'm going to start over. I want to get myself ready for the book, so I'm going to just think aloud a little bit. Everything weather. Before I even open the book, I'm thinking, hmm, it's a book about weather. Um, I know some things about weather because the weather is part of my life every day. I have to check the weather to see what, what I'm going to wear, if I need a jacket or a sweatshirt. Um, I know that the weather affected us today. We had to be inside for recess. So I know weather affects people. That's a connection I can make. Um, I'm hoping this book, and it says everything weather. I'm guessing there's going to be some parts on extreme weather, like tornadoes, maybe hurricanes, um, which are topics that I know um, many of you are interested in. Um, I'm thinking there's probably going to be um, a glossary at the back and an index that could help me if I'm looking for a certain topic. Oh, there it is. Looking here, I can see oh, Fahrenheit scale, rainbows, temperature, um, green building technologies. I'm not really sure what that is. Oh, hurricanes, so there is some things on hurricanes. So I know that will be at the back for me to look at if I need it. Glossary. I'm going to go now to that table of contents. I bet it has a table of contents if it's a nonfiction informational book. Does it? Yeah. So this can help me figure out how this text is organized. So here's how the author has organized. They've got what's the weather is one section, weather extremes, weather predictions, and fun with weather. Here's kind of what I expected before I even opened it. I expected it to tell me about what's the weather or what is weather. I see that. I was hoping it would have a section on extreme weather, and I see that. There's going to be a few pages. I'm curious about this section, fun with weather, what that might be. So I think today when I start my reading, I'm going to start right here in this first section, just getting that background of what is the weather. So as a reader, that's probably the chunk I'm going to start with today. And that first page is called Weather or Not. Petra, check your listening. And I see there's some headings and some text boxes and some pictures that I will read. I wonder whether or not when they say are not, what would not be weather? Skylar? So then I might wonder, why is that frog in the picture? Alex? Hmm? So when I read this part today, I'm going to be expecting to read about some things that maybe are not considered weather, but have a connection to weather. Does that seem like that might be what this is about, Amora? Hmm. 
I'm going to stop there, fourth graders. What did you notice? What were some things that I was doing? Jenny? So I kind of decided where I want to start. Braden? Did I dive, just dive right in? Okay, hey, Cruz, what else did you notice? Was I noticing that, that text, and some pictures and captions and different text features? Yeah. Fourth graders, do you feel like I'm ready now to read this book? Yeah. I do. I feel like I'm a little more ready. I understand a little bit more what's in the book. I probably am not going to read the whole book right now. I've kind of decided on which chunk of the book I want to read about, that section on weather or not, or what weather is, what weather is not. And here is what I'm going to do. I previewed the whole text. I kind of looked through the, how it was all organized, and I predicted how it might go. As readers, that's what we will be working on. Before I just start picking up a book to read it, I'm going to preview it a little bit, and I'm going to make some predictions. In this part, I might learn. In another part, I already know about this section. This section might be new to me. I am ready to read this book now in a little bit more of a grown-up way, to read, to learn, and understand. So today, um, as I send you off, I'm going to ask you to do two things. I'm going to ask you to keep looking and reading your new nonfiction informational books. Just reading them. I don't want you to take any notes or write anything down or do any stop and jots just yet. Just reading them. So read, read, read. Your second job today as readers is to take out a book that you haven't looked at yet and take some time and really... Everybody? Preview, Preview that book in that grown-up kind of way. Say, and ask yourself those questions. Predict what you're going to be reading about. Pick a chunk that you're going to read first. At the end of that chunk, go back then and say, hmm, is this what I expected it would be? Or did it surprise me, what I just read about? Or was it what I thought this section would be? Right. Questions on that? Hey, give me a thumbs up if you kind of know what your job is today during reading. While you are reading at your reading spots, enjoying those books and previewing, I will also meet with a couple of you for book conferences, so bring your office to the back table with you if you're signed up. We'll do that this morning. All right, you may head to your reading spot. Enjoy. So we could ask Isidro, we could ask him about that main character, like, what was that character's biggest idea Idea or biggest? We know that always in a fiction book, there's always some kind of a change. So what was his biggest change in the story, or how did that character change? Because mm -hmm. this is all still chapter one, so this section is all about... One happy, one happy family. Mm -hmm. What does that mean when they say one happy family? Because they're frogs. Because they're together. Are they telling you about different kinds of frogs in each section? Yeah. You talked about some theme. You talked about your characters. Jenny, do you feel like this was a good fit book for Venetia? Was she able to tell you lots about it? And 
have a conversation. Was this a good fit book for Jenny? Yeah. Okay. All right, girls, I got your reading log and good use of your question stems today. Was this information what you expected it would be about when you read that heading, Starving Hippos? Did they give you information about and what was happening to them and causing them to starve? What's this next section about? Helping the hippos. As a reader, what, what will you expect to read about here? Anything else that you did that got you ready to start reading today? Um, I was wondering how much they weighed and showed me they get. So this part was the most interesting. Mm -hmm. What would you have thought? I thought, I thought they had the best, like, less of, like, like, less bones. It's like big cats and little cats. Because I thought people, people would have more bones, but they do. Mm -hmm. And that's interesting. The extra bones let cats twist and bend freely. As a reader now, I'd be interested in, are they going to tell me more about the cats? That, because I've never really read about them twisting and bending freely. Right, fourth graders, if both you and your partner are up at the carpet, you may begin your conversation. I'm guessing you have a lot to talk about today, about what you've read and learned. So quite tell me, what did you find out about choppers today? How is your book organized? They're faster than regular motorcycles. Okay, fourth graders, I heard some great conversations about many different topics, because you all have books on lots of different topics. And it's fun, when we read nonfiction, it's fun to tell other people what you are, what you're reading about and about your topic. How many of you, you and your partner today, read a book on the same topic? Are there any groups that had a same topic book? Okay, so Jason and Nathan, you're both reading about Titanic. Titanic. So you have a lot to discuss. Say, are we reading the same information in our books? Are we getting the same, same information or something different that we're learning? All right, fourth graders, let's kind of review for today. We talked about, as readers, as those grown-up nonfiction readers, to help us be the strongest nonfiction readers we can be, we're going to preview. Oh, I need everybody sitting up tall. Eyes up here. Carter, we're going to preview the whole text and predict. Oh. Ask yourself, did I do that today? Before I just started jumping in and reading my book, did I take some time? Did you take time to preview? and predict and get yourself ready. Was anybody surprised by something they read today that maybe they weren't expecting when they predicted? Amora? Mm -hmm. Oh, interesting. And you weren't expecting to learn that or read about that. Um, Jacob, one more. I learned that the octopuses um, are friendly sometimes, but if they feel scared, they shoot venom. Do you remember what section of your book that was in? What section did you learn that fact? It was, is octopus dangerous? So was that something maybe you would expect to have read in that chapter of your book? No, it surprised you? Okay. All right, hands down for now. Um, fourth graders, tomorrow we will continue to read those books that you've committed to. Tomorrow you'll get a chance um, to keep reading and we're going to continue to use this strategy. Um, but tomorrow we're going to learn more about um, how authors organize those texts in something called text structures. Say that with me. Text structures. What's the text structure of your book that helps you to read it and understand it? Okay.
great work today. I think you've all made great selections on the books in your book bag and finding out lots of fun things. Right. We will add this one to our chart of helping us to be careful and purposeful readers of nonfiction.